Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to paint this beautiful watercolor piece on St. Cuthbert's Bockingford watercolor paper. So stay tuned and keep on watching. Hey guys, back with the nose to the proverbial grindstone. I am working on another watercolor commission. This is actually a redo of the last one I worked on and I'm doing this one on St. Cuth uh, St. Cuth <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, it's been a really long day. St. Cuthbert's Mill Bockingford watercolor paper. And this was of course paid for out of my own pocket, but you know, since that's becoming kind of unusual these days, it's always important to say it. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to ink this and I'm going to ink this with a Sailor Mitzel Ida. And these are waterproof and Copic proof. So I'm actually going to start with what I think will be the most difficult. And that's going to be her hands. And these were sketched. This whole thing was sketched using um, probably HB lead. So I'm going to finish inking this piece in time lapse. If you guys are interested in an inking tutorial, especially a food aid pen inking tutorial, I have loads of those on this channel. Just check out my advanced inking playlist. Right, guys so this has been inked now it needs to dry for 24 hours before I can erase it and do watercolor on top of it all right guys so this has had a chance to dry fully and I'm gonna grab a super soft eraser Ba -ba! And this is a white stroke from Jerry's Artorama. And I used to be a mono brand enthusiast for years, but this is even softer and it does an even better job of removing graphite. And we're just going to erase those pencils. And I'm gonna do that off camera because there's really no reason for y'all to watch that. When we're done erasing, we're just gonna brush it away. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and grab my paint and do a watercolor wash. So this is a tape bound pad. That means it's only bound on one side. I don't want to have to stretch it. Um, and I, so I should have used a block, but I don't have any blocks free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something new and we'll find out if it works. Um, I'm going to do the background wash. And then after the background wash is dried, I'm going to clamp both sides with a bulldog clip. Uh, that way I'm not losing image real estate to the bulldog clip, but it should also hold it tight for when I'm painting the character. Okay, so we're gonna want an eyedropper, clean water, and a weld palette. And I'm going to go ahead and activate Soho Urban Blue Violet as our background color. I'm going to give it a chance for the water to soak into the paint and uh, then we're going to get started on the background. All right, so since that's had a chance to activate, I'm going to use a synthetic brush. Those can take abuse a little bit better and I should have taped this down. I usually tape it down with washi. We're going to go ahead and add it to our well and I apologize that that is somewhat off camera. Now 
and then we're going to use a slightly bigger synthetic. This is a Princeton Neptune. We're going to do that first initial pass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the background color as dark as I want it to be. You got to work kind of fast. And then I'm going to clamp it down so we don't get buckling. Hopefully. We'll see. This is my first time sort of working in that method. I paint to the edges. And my hands are shaking so I can't pull a perfect line. Always frustrating. I'm going to clean that up in a minute. And you should work with the largest brush, largest brush you are comfortable painting with. So that means the largest brush that you think you can navigate these tight areas with. All right, so I've got the background. What I'm gonna do is using a thirsty brush, I'm going to absorb any of the extra water and then grabbing a paper towel, I'm going to try and soak up some of those areas that went over a little bit. I'm going to correct them a little more fully after the paper's had a chance to dry. All right, so that first layer has dried. It's actually a really nice color. Um, I think what I'm going to do, and I apologize for all the arms and shadow in the picture, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do a fade up into the light. Okay, so I want the bottom to be dark and the top to be light. So I'm applying clean water. Of course, casting a shadow makes it incredibly hard to see. So clean water. And I'm going to absorb the excess with a thirsty brush. And I wish I had octopus arms because I really need to go grab a clamp and I don't have any handy. Anyway, this is a sometimes easier way to do a gradiated wash. Hopefully this will hold it down while I grab that clamp. And we'll let that dry. And as you guys can see, it's already starting to kip, but we are hopefully gonna correct that after we finish the background. So as you guys can see, there is a gradation to the color. So what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna do more of the same. Let me zoom in for you guys except lower down and I want to you want to be really gentle because you're not trying to disrupt the color you'd put down previously so you basically just want to float your color in and we're going to go darker with the urban blue violet float some of that color up in there. What would work best is if I can raise the back end higher so it just a little bit so it drips into that area instead. And I am pretty obsessed with this color. I was looking for, I have been looking for a good um, use a thirsty brush to absorb that before it gets out of control. There we 
we go. I was looking for a good sort of darker ultramarine or a truer ultramarine. So I guess I wanted something with a lot more violet in it. And this just about fit the bill without, I don't like a lot of gradation in my, um, in my ultramarines. And a lot of them, because they are lapis based or synthetic lapis based, have a lot of gradation, so. All right, and then we let that dry. All right, guys, so our background has dried. I need to go change my water out. As always, I recommend you paint with two cups of water, one for clean, one for dirty, but due to space limitations, I am unfortunately stuck with using just one. So I'm gonna switch, actually what I wanna do first before I switch my water out is I'm gonna paint her eyes using that blue. And this time I'll be smart and I won't use So we've got the darker tops of the eye. Then we're going to use clean water. Blend that out. All the way to the bottom. Yeah. Looks so good. So far, so good. And since she's wearing a white dress, we're also going to want to use... Um, some of this blue, except much more watered down. Might as well do that now too, right? This time we're not gonna paint her dress as dark. So we're also going to use some of that water to blend this out since we're not quite at the cast shadow stage, sort of at the ambient lighting stage. can also use that to wick away a little bit excess color. And then we'll let that dry. Oh, unfortunately, you guys can't see me working on that. I'm sorry, I goofed. Um, but yes, gonna let this dry and then we're gonna work on skin tone. All right, with our clean water, we're gonna fill two wells. We're gonna fill one for her hair and one for her skin. We're gonna move a little farther away from that darker blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and activate yellow ochre to both of them, scarlet, and then that's probably gamboge yellow. And they are definitely starting to look kind of gross, but they still function perfectly well. And I'm also gonna grab a synthetic and use that to clean up Try to at least scrub away some of the blue that got into her hair. Some papers are easier to lift from than others. It seems that the Bockingford paper is gonna be a little difficult. Let's actually grab something a bit scrappier if I have it. Where is my filbert? There we go. Let's try lifting it with a filbert. And we're also going to grab some more of that blue. Delineate that shadow. And then go through her dress again and do cast shadows this time. And since she's wearing a white dress, makes sense to shade with a very, very light blue. It's a thirsty brush. Pick up that excess water. And then we'll start mixing her skin tone. Now this needs to dry before we can apply the skin. And 
and I probably should clamp down the other side since we're about to start dealing with a significant amount of water. Now we're going to mix her hair color. We want to start as always very very light and work progressively darker. So I'm gonna let what I just put down dry and I'm gonna go grab some more bulldog clips. All right, y'all. So next up, I'm going to use the largest, mm, I might have something bigger than this. I don't actually have all that many natural hair brushes in larger sizes because they tend to get really expensive even if they're squirrel hair and I just don't care for camel. So this might be the largest to have. I might actually, I like how I just dump that in the water. Uh, wrong place. I mean, I do have uh, some quills, but those can be annoying to control. So I think what I will do is instead use a synthetic and do the first layer on her skin. And if there's any pooling, I'll come back with the thirsty brush and absorb some of that. All right, guys, so this has had plenty of time to dry. So I'm gonna grab a slightly smaller brush. We're gonna pick up a little bit of cherry red and also a, it's probably a cadmium hue if we're being honest. Water it down a little bit. This time for this rendition, we're going to go much lighter, I think. And then we'll blend it out. Here the neck as well. Blend that out also. And underneath the arms and on the bust. basically trying to liven up the skin. Definitely want some on the pads of the hands, so the underside, the palms of the hands, as well as where fingers sort of overlap and on the knuckle joints. Blend that out as well. And then just a little over there and give that a chance to dry. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. We're gonna go in with the skin tone again. And I may have to put one on the bottom because these are making it really wobbly. That's why blocks can be great because they'll hold your paper stretch so it doesn't buckle all over the place, but it doesn't cause any wobbling the way bulldog clips can. And in case I didn't mention it earlier, because I don't rem actually remember if I mentioned it during the inking video, but this is actually, um, I'm redoing a commission for Kabocha, and it is a character that has not yet been introduced into her webcomic linked, but will be, prob I don't want to say soon, because it's not my comic, so I can't make those kind of promises. And I was asked not to spoil the character, so unfortunately, I am not going to give you guys any 
information about her. All right, let's give the skin a chance to dry. Actually, wait, I want to smooth out that area up there. All right, so that skin layer is cool to the touch, but topically dry. So I'm going to do a little bit more work with the blush. And I think part of the problem I have with doing blush is that I think I work too hot with it sometimes. So Scarlet is too, too yellow. But Holbein Cherry Red is a little, little bluer. So I think that'll actually work out a little more realistically. Yes, actually that is much cuter than what I did the other day. I'm gonna, I don't want her lips to be too red, but I do want them to have some color. All right, so far so good. And then I'm just going to a little more color to that palm. And then we let that dry. Oh, actually what we could do, we could start her eyes. So I'm going to activate, I think I wanna sort of do a couple of levels of colors. I'm gonna activate a yellow green to start with and we'll paint that as our base color and then we'll step away let this dry so that green actually dried a little darker than I thought it would, but it's a really beautiful color and it's going to work really well for what I want to do. So the next step using Hooker's Green, and I believe this is Holbein, but it might be Daniel Smith Hooker's Green. Not that it necessarily matters a whole lot, but I've been talking about paints on my Twitter a whole bunch. Looking good, looking good. And I'm gonna also blend it out a little bit, but I'm gonna leave some of that original green and I'm just gonna keep building up her eye color. And I actually really like how that's looking. And then I'm gonna go back in and do her lips. And since none of this is actually touching her hair, I can go in and block in her hair. And the gamboge mixed with a little bit of a light yellow ochre makes for a really sunny blonde. And I'm gonna leave some of it, the natural white of the paper. I just found a bit of her ear I'd missed, so I need to get that next time. I think I'm feeling much more confident about this commission. And I think this is really gonna hit the mark. So I'm glad I opted to redo it and better capture the character once I understood her a little bit better because I am much happier with this than I am with the other one. 
And for the other one, I was using Canton Laquel Heritage, which is, I feel like it's supposed to be their replacement for their Moulin du Roy, but I actually really like their Moulin du Roy better. Oh, this is supposed to be hair. Let's see if I can fix this. And it just, it doesn't really perform uniformly. There are some pieces I've done with it where uh, I really liked it. And then there's some pieces I've done with it that I really struggled with it. And I felt like I was really struggling with it in the prior rendition of this piece. So let's try to pick up that blue. I did pick some up, just not a whole lot. And it's fine if it's a little bit shaded anyway, because I mean, if there's still some blue, because it would be shaded. But we need to step away and give this a chance to dry. All right, so that first layer of hair has had a chance to dry. So next thing I wanna do is start mixing the shadow color. And I'm gonna keep it much lighter this time. I went too heavy handed last time. So some naphthol red, some permanent mauve, that's a Soho color. And get those through Jerry's Artorama. All right, and let that dry. All right, guys, so I'm going to do another layer of skin tone now. And then I think I'm going to turn my focus to her hair. And remember, unless you're trying to intentionally darken the whole of something, with every layer we're going to cover less than the layer before. That way, we can start building up some contrast. sad is, uh, well, maybe not sad, but this Bockingford paper is actually a lot easier to paint on and I'm getting fewer out of bounds lines. And I believe this is a cellulose paper, but it does a really good job of um, sort of maintaining its moisture so that you can continue working with it. And then I'm going to go back in with that dark green, that hooker's green, really. And top shadow part of the eye. Now zoom in so you guys can see what I did there. And then, of course, we got to step away. Before I do that, though, I'm going to mix some more gamboge yellow into the hair color and some more yellow ochre just so that our next layer will be a little more saturated than this one. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. We're gonna go back in to her hair using that color we just mixed up. And this is slightly more saturated than our previous pass. Make sure we get into that area there. Zoom in for you guys, sorry. Didn't realize how zoomed out I was. And I really like to let the brush do as much of the work as I can. So I try to keep my movements light and fluid and airy so I can get sort of a flicking effect. 
I'm going to go back into that blush color. Be really careful here because I don't actually want it to go into her hair. I think it'll actually be okay. And then I'm going to use a smaller brush and pick up just a little bit of saturated cherry red. Okay. Well, that's not saturated enough. Let's see if we can get it a little better. There we go. All right, looking really good so far. So I'm gonna let that dry. All right, guys, so I'm fairly happy with the yellow of her hair. I wanna move in a more yellow ochre direction. So I'm gonna mix a big gob of yellow ochre. I also wanna go a smidge darker with the shadow color on her skin. So I'm gonna grab some more permanent mauve and some more naphthol red, and I may have even gone too dark with that. Let's bring a little water in there. I'm gonna do that first. So I'm covering less than I did with the layer before. And then I'm going to do a cast shadow where her hair would be, a cast shadow under here. And when I say cast shadow, we're not going to blend that out. All right. Might blend out the shadow on this arm now. And then I'm also going to do a little bit of it on her upper eyelids there being much more delicate with her this time. Went too heavy last time and it just kind of ruined the piece. All right, so I'm gonna let those dry. All right, so next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of shadow. That might even be a little too much shadow, a little bit of shadow. Also, want to keep working on her lips. Except I can't ever seem to get color just right. Pick up a little naphthol red. Let's see. Looking good so far. Sorry, pull out. And going to do another layer on her hair using that color that we just mixed. That's a little, yeah, there we go. A little more saturated. So don't forget, every layer we're going to cover less than the layer before. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. And then we need to let that dry as well. All right, guys, so it is a brand new morning and I'm gonna go ahead and resume painting. And the yellow for her hair has, of course, evaporated overnight, so it's gotten a lot more intense. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it to start shading. And 
And then while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and activate Payne's Gray. And I'm going to use that as the basis for her silver jewelry. And then I'm going to step away and let that dry. And then I want to use some of the evaporated skin tone to just do sort of a darker area on everything that would be further away from the viewer. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of indigo on a very fine point. Uh, Creative Mark Rhapsody brush. All right, guys. So next, I'm gonna use a little bit of a much darker yellow ochre, just off camera here. Mix it right there. Add some yellow. All right. Could maybe even go a little darker. Actually, going to add a little bit more yellow in because I feel like some of the blonde over hair gets a little lost with how faint some of the layers are. Right, so that has also had a chance to draw. I think we're making pretty good progress on this. I'm gonna reactivate the skin shadow color I mixed the other day. And I'm also going to go in and darken up all right going to keep adding shadow to the hair. And then I need to color that ear that keeps getting missed. And also want to add a little bit of blue gray or some neutral color to her dress. So I'm going to add a little bit of purple and a little bit of Payne's gray. And then where there would be a cast shadow, I'm just going to go ahead And then I'm going to blend it out and float some in there. All right. And then also blend this out just a bit, a little too dark for what I need. And then Hmm. Now we need to let this dry, but I'm sort of wondering where I can build up some contrast. So I'll let this dry and come back to that. All right, this has had a chance to dry. So again, we're going to carefully go in and I'm actually using that skin shading color. Actually, I'm sure you guys would appreciate it if I zoomed in a bit. And I actually want to grab just a little bit of permanent mauve. It's a really good color 
for lightly shading yellows and oranges because it doesn't desaturate the color too much. I know yellows and oranges, blondes can be kind of difficult to shade. And you can shade them with browns, that is definitely an option. But you can also shade them with permanent moth. I also want to go back in to Payne's Gray. And we're going to add a little more detail here to the silver. And then we're going to let that dry and I'm going to grab my white wash and after this is dry we can get started on some of those accents. All right guys, so I have a couple things I need to do real quick. I need to add, let me actually zoom in for y'all a little more. Add the low lights on these. And then I'm gonna let them dry because I wanna do a little bit of that um, Sakura glittery paint. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my white gouache in one of my palette wells. Pull out maybe enough that y'all can see that. Not quite. Let me rotate that. Okay. Now you can. And then I'm going to add some water. And give it a good mix. You want the consistency of cream. Some people can work with it a little thicker. Some people do prefer it a little thinner, but cream was what we were taught when I was in grad school. And we're going to, so it's actually a little thin, which is fine for what I'm doing right now. And if you guys will just bear with me a moment, I'll zoom back in for y'all. And we want to let the brush do most of the work. Then we're going to use a finer brush. And we may need to go back in and um, sort of reinforce some of those highlights, but I'm actually going to grab some sparkly, sparkly. Because after all, who doesn't love some sparkles? Let's see. So that's clear. This is one of the two I want. And this is the other of the two I want. And I believe I want to start, no, I want to start with this one. Pass with that. and let all that have a chance to dry. All right, so that's had plenty of time to dry. I'm gonna zoom in, first of all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer with the super sparkly dark silver. Ooh, 
wants to clog up on me. Give that a chance to dry and grab my glittery silver. Hopefully it's working better today. This time we're going to use a lighter hand. Alright, so I think other than adding a little bit of a white highlight to those, we're just about finished. Well, and the glitter has to dry as well. But otherwise, we're just about done. So let's add that little bit of a highlight. think we're just about finished. So once the glitter has had a chance to dry, I'll go ahead and remove it from the block. All right, guys, I think we are finally done. Get some glittery action there. It's there, but hopefully it's not too intense. Now that I look at it, I'm gonna, yeah, I know I'm gonna keep putting around. Uh, I'm just gonna tighten up the line work that got kind of covered up. Make it look intentional instead of sloppy. Often that's if you get a lot, if you um, have a professor or a teacher who comments on your work is sloppy, often, um, often what's really keeping it in that zone is just like one more layer of going over things and cleaning things up because there's kind of a fine line between like sloppy and intentional and sometimes just giving it another pass like I'm doing here and cleaning things up tightening things up a little bit is that difference And you don't even necessarily have to go over the whole thing just here and there where it's most noticeable so we're going to remove our bulldog clips and since this is tape bound on one side we're just going to pull it off and that is our watercolor piece so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you want more watercolor content you can check out other tutorials here on this channel or you can check out the loads. I mean, I think I have like a book worth of watercolor instruction and reviews over at natosoup.blogspot.com. So if you want to know more about watercolor, if you're looking for recommendations, I really recommend that you head on over and read my watercolor basic series. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys had a good time. And if you're interested in commissioning me, you can find out commission information at natosoup.com. Not a, la, 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 not a soup .blogspot .com under commission info while my online shop is down. So thank you guys so much and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.